Guys, before we get started with uh, tonight's uh, um, zone review, I uh, just wanted to give the quick uh, legal dis uh, disclaimer, and that is that uh, the website's for educational purposes only. I'm not rec making a recommendation to buy or sell any particular futures, equities, options, or currency, right? Uh, there's significant risk in trading futures. Please be aware of them. You can lose a lot of money if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, past performance is not indicative of uh, future performance. And uh, make sure that you consult your registered financial advisor and your risk trading plan before ever investing or trading in a financial instrument. Uh, at any rate, that's it. Uh, enjoy the video, guys, and uh, have a great night. Hi, guys. This is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching, and I am doing the uh, a quick zone trade review for uh, the 6th of July. Um, the idea behind this review is to simply give a people idea of how we use the zones, and when they were effective, when, when they were not. And unlike some of the super traders you see on Twitter, sometimes things do fail the majority of the time. The idea is to give our, our members in the room a high odds trade location, right? So this is going to focus on ES and Q, the US 30 year note, and CL. And hopefully, what I'll be able to demonstrate for you is how we are able to use these uh, trade locations in a short review and show you how they are able to give us high odds. Uh, for counter trades, right? So there are a couple of rules and a couple of exceptions uh, that I want to mention just on ES. On ES, when we gap down and there's a potential for an open drive lower, I do uh, caution that only the most aggressive traders should be trading, particularly in the first half hour and then followed by the first hour. Uh, if you let those unwind, that tends to be where the most damage occurs for any of the zones, right? Um, and so that helps traders understand how they can avoid uh, getting run over in a trade and um, let them move on to a time of day where they're more likely to get a counter reaction which is usually past 930 so we have a couple of challenges right now first of all it's summertime which dramatically slows ES down it significantly slows ES down and then secondly it makes it um, it makes it challenging to get pattern completions in a timely fashion. So the idea today was that if we could, we opened up underneath this white zone, right? So the, the white zones are what we're focused on. They're the highest odds. We opened up underneath this white zone. We opened, we gapped pre-market. We bounced right out of this white zone. This was Globex low. And then we, we gapped down. We're unable to fill the gap. And we drove straight into the zone. The problem was it was the first hour, uh, first half hour of the day, and it resembled an open drive lower. So we did not take this location long. Only the most aggressive traders did, and they were advised to target that Globex low. And if they did, uh, they were able to get exactly uh, seven ticks to eight ticks out of that trade. So the first question is on the zone. Did the zone work? It did. It held it for 25 minutes before allowing it to pass down to the second support level, which was this 24.10 to 24.12. Now, um, again, my goal, because I'm a little bit less aggressive than most traders, um, particularly on gap downs, was to trade after 9.30. This zone got hit in uh, prior to 9.30, as a matter of fact, just after Econ was released. And I'm very cautious. Um, I'm just very cautious in the first hour when I get a gap down, open drive lower. There's weakness in both NQ and DS. I don't like to get run over. Uh, no one likes to get run over, but, you know, my goal is primarily capital preservation. And the best way I have of preserving my capital is not to allow myself to get run over at all. And the easiest way I have to do that is skipping the first um, hour to half hour. So this is where I was looking for my first trade. Um, if you look, I'm going to erase this. What I targeted was the 5060 retrace back. And this was the first place that we got a 5060 retrace back was right here. Okay. This is where I entered the short. I was not able to get two points. I entered actually just uh, just past 16 right here, or just at 16. And I was able to get about 14 and a half was my best scale, 14 and three quarters. And um, I left a small trailer, which I covered on this backside test over here. So normally, um, what would happen, I think it's important that you understand why the price action is doing what it's doing so that you get some kind of understanding of why it's more difficult sometimes in the summer than outside of the summer specifically with regards to ES. And that is because normally what you would have, would have expected on a break of the white zone like this would have been a backside test and then the target was a continuation down towards 2404 to 2402. 
that clearly did not happen and that's okay right that part is not a big deal that that did not happen is not devastating or upsetting it's simply a question of how am i going to manage how am i going to manage that trade so that i don't allow it to stop me i did not intend for it or think that we would travel all the way back up and end up with a balanced day today particularly on a on a thursday i thought that the range would expand and that it would expand to the downside because of summertime, we drifted all the way up. Um, I thought this was my highest odds trade, and that's the only trade I took in ES. And I was kind of left twiddling my thumbs because I covered the trade for a small profit. It worked, but it didn't work. Normally, I would have expected to get this price action posted in here. Nonetheless, I think this demonstrates very well why we focus on the white zone in the room because they give very, very good uh, trade locations. And if you'll follow this series that I'm going to be doing on the zones only, you'll see that day after day, those white zones provide fantastic trade location. Okay, so let's move over to NQ, much the same situation. We basically did not have a key location on NQ today. This was the NQ chart. Basically what we were looking for is something similar to what we had yesterday. Today's the sixth. I want to show you all this really quick so that everyone can see it clearly. 0705, we'll pull it up. Okay, so if we look at NQ from yesterday, this was a move even under the Fed conditions we were driving straight up. We came straight into the white zone here, rejected straight down. This is a rejection for 20 points, right? Um, that's a great trade if you can capture it. I mean, I, I don't have any other way of saying it. That's just a fantastic trade if you have the ability to, to, to capture it. 20 points is $400 a contract. I'll take it any day of the week. Uh, the fact of the matter was that even under Fed conditions, this gave a great rotation down, right? So when we go to today's chart, right, you'll see that we had two white zone locations, right? All the other points are for visual reference only or for more aggressive trades for more sophisticated traders. And the idea is, again, so that anyone can step in and know where they have their trade location. As long as the risk parameter meets the risk parameter that they're comfortable with, they're able to take the trade. You'll notice that we did not um, move into the, uh, we did in uh, Globex, but uh, during the RTH, we did not move into this uh, 5645, 5658, and we did not move into this 5573, into this 5551. My start target is still this 5560 to the downside. We have not hit it yet, but uh, my thought is uh, overnight uh, or sometime tomorrow that we'll come back and give a retest of that July 4th Globex low test into this white zone. At any rate, uh, these are the two white zones. Neither one hit today. Again, you can see it was a little weird on NQ. NQ has been weaker and it actually busted up to a new high before you sold off at the end of the day. Um, just unusual. Uh, I don't know what else to say other than it was summertime and way too many shorts packed in at the low, which is why I'm constantly reiterating, don't short in the hole. If you can at all avoid it, don't short in the hole. Okay, so let's move to the next um, chart and that is um, the 30-year note okay and you will see in the overnight let's start with the for my european traders we opened above the key location rotated down into it and gave a beautiful rotation back up again you got to remember this is 33 dollars a contract so even a few ticks can end up making up a uh, quite a nice trade right we then rolled over. You'll notice that this zone was marked as a zone. It was also this week's low, but it's been tested multiple times and it was weaker now. Basically, it was a warning. <laughs> Excuse me. If you take this zone, be prepared for it to break. Sure enough, it did break. Backside tested. And then if you'll notice, we pushed right down into the next key location. Now, there was an issue with this. Uh, the bond market opens at 720. That's right here. And I generally do not recommend trading right in front of a pit session open. Uh, because you don't know what's going to happen on the open. And sure enough, we flush the zone, right? And if you look, we come right to the top of the 152 and 530 seconds. And then look at this beautiful rotation during pit session. 152, 530 seconds, all the way back up to 152 and 1730 seconds. That's uh, 10, 12 ticks times $33. That's $333, almost $400 per contract in this rotation. And then it beautifully rejects out of the zone, right back down, to the bottom of the zone for another 10, 17, almost 20 ticks to the downside, right? And so I just think that's incredibly valuable. 
when you can get key location then again you can see when we tagged up over here again it's the first touch of the zone is what we're really focused on the second and third touch of the zone you have to have a more sophisticated trade setup to be able to tell when they're going to work but the the bonds were during the pit session were incredibly valuable these trade locations were really really valuable and gave some really good profit opportunities for a lot of uh, for a lot of the members in the room okay so then we'll move over to the CL and this was the uh, coup d'etat now usually I have a warning on inventory days if you trade inventory days just be aware you can get ripped it's no fun right um, no one likes to get ripped it can be really really volatile so I'm not encouraging anyone to trade on inventory days I'm simply showing uh, I did trade on inventory day but I am simply show and I was willing to accept the risk uh, the goal again is to show that the zones work very very accurately we pushed we drove straight into the zone my stop is generally 10 ticks behind the back of the zone right and then look at the rotation down this is the rotation from the front of the zone 4633 all the way down to 4643 that's almost a thousand dollars a contract um, it's a really really great trade and then notice how in this zone two things we opened above overnight again push down into late Asia and then rotate back up and pushed all the way up uh, I promise you there's traders that catch both sides of this move not I because I don't stick around this I got lucky on because it just melted but um, there are traders that capture this move and have the ability to make just an enormous amount of money and it, it's a huge advantage if you can get trade location and then you can manage that location accurately it's it, it, it's I can't tell you how imperative it is to be able to take an area like this with confidence and know that you have a very good chance of getting paid so um, at any rate that's the zones you can see we broke overnight uh, the next zone I have uh, I haven't adjusted for the date but clearly this uh, um, 4414 to 4396 is my next area overnight I'll be very interested to see uh, if that holds or if that gets run over yeah either way uh, those are the four uh, charts that I cover U NQ ES CL which is crude oil and then lastly um, the 30-year note so uh, I hope everyone had a great day that's the summary I'll give a deeper trade review um, as I can post them uh, the ones I do for the room uh, they cover more of a coaching aspect and how to manage the trade and what we're looking for but I wanted to give people a clear picture of the zones and I'll be hopefully doing this briefly every evening y'all have a great night and uh, we'll talk to you soon oh there we go hold on a second